Oh, the mind, <laughs> going this way, that way, conjuring up all kinds of ideas about the nature of reality. Some people are interested in the nature of reality, the profound meaning of reality, and most people are not. Most people are just really interested in their own survival or having a, a peaceful, easygoing life. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know the statistics of how many people are actually truly interested in the fundamental meaning of reality, but that's not so important. I mean, what is important is to actually live a powerful, exalted human life, like we know that is possible. Whether we're interested in the meaning of reality or just inherently knowing that we can live a peaceful life, we know it's possible. Um, we now have the tools to do this. We have a training. We have a worldwide community of people who have found a way to actually empower all of their data, all of their thoughts, emotions, sensations, everything about their life where they realize that there is peace, there is stability, there is harmony. What unites us all, what is fundamental to every human, is open intelligence. Our power to know. There might be all kinds of other labels of what this might be. But we keep it really simple in the Balance View Training, a training that would be available for everyone today. What is most fundamental about all of us, regardless of our background, of our skin color, of our religion, of our cultural upbringing, what about every single person is this, the same, you could say. That's our power to know. When we stop thinking for a moment, we're introduced very directly to open intelligence. When we stop thinking, what remains? It's alert, clear, cognizance. What's looking through your eyes? So we very directly introduce ourselves to open intelligence, short moment by short moment, until it becomes obvious that open intelligence, our primary identity, it's always on, it's always with us. We don't have to get it from somewhere else. We don't have to be in a different set of circumstances to recognize our powerful, stable identity. And another way that we've simplified the training and the nature of reality is rather than categorizing everything that we perceive, all phenomena, ref frames of reference, concepts, thoughts, emotions, sensations, rather than compartmentalize it, categorize it, try to figure it out, have lots and lots and lots of books on it, we really simplify it and call it data. <coughs> data just a stream of data. The thoughts, the emotions, the sensations simplify it. Data that is appearing as open intelligence, inseparable from open intelligence. Like a rainbow is inseparable from the space from which it appears. Data are inseparable from open intelligence. Without open intelligence, without your power to know, there would be no perception. There would be no thoughts. There would be no sensations. There would be no emotional frameworks. So in this training, we rely on short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. And then the instinctive recognition that data and open intelligence are inseparable, like the color blue in the sky are inseparable, becomes more and more our instinctive realization, our recognition. So we could have the datum of why does not everybody know this? So these are the thoughts that are appearing. That's the data that we experience. So that's a perfect starting point. Why does not everyone recognize this? When we emphasize data, it goes into a whole intellectual array of descriptions and it gets more and more complicated. We come up with more frames of references, more assumptions, 
Maybe it makes us more miserable reflecting on why everybody is so miserable. Instead, right then and there, recognize open intelligence, your power to know that is required for you to know the thought, why is everybody not recognizing open intelligence? In short moments, allow your description of everything that's arising around that whole story to be as it is. Rather than continuing to indulge in that description further and further and further, we choose in short moments to allow the data to be exactly as it is. The data arises and self-releases in this basic space of open intelligence. It doesn't come from somewhere else, reside somewhere and then go somewhere else. It's simply arising and resolving in, as, of, and through open intelligence. So it's, it's easy to see that the thoughts, they have no substance. They, you can't find a location. So in short moments, allow the stream of thoughts to be as they are, do as they do, all the while maintaining open intelligence. Just coming back gently and gently when we naturally remember to do so. It wouldn't necessarily be a disengagement. What, what are we disengaging from? It's more like just picture letting the breeze in the air being as it is right now. We're not trying to do anything about the breeze. So it's effortless. So when the thought comes up of trying to figure out the training, Rather than try to do anything, like trying to in, indulge in it, think about it, figure it out, just give up that approach for a short moment. Rather than avoid it or replace it, just let it be as it is. Just drop the bags of reification for a, a short moment. The thoughts are inseparable from your power to know. There's not a dichotomy. There's not a a subject and an object. It's inseparable from the power to know. Without having this kind of training up in this recognition <coughs> from an early age, that's not our direct perception or it's not our direct experience until we start training in this way of allowing data descriptions to be as they are. So what makes it easier is to just actually come here and hang out with people who are recognizing the nature of reality and their direct experience. If we're an intellectual kind of person and we just cannot allow things to be as they are and we continue to analyze and describe, just come and hang out with people who are naturally demonstrating the results of the training. When I came to the training about nine years ago, there were, I don't know how many people were involved, but there were a lot less than there are today. So the growth of people recognizing their inherently beneficial nature, stopping the war within through allowing their data to be as they are, through demonstrating it within community, the number of people has grown exponentially. If we were to plot it out on a graph, the number of people participating is always increasing. It's probably on a gentle curve right now, and at some point it'll just keep going. So that has helped me see that you know, the results of this training are actually working in a large number of people from all parts of the world. It was easy for me to get really wrapped up in thinking, well, if open intelligence is purely beneficial, then yes, why aren't we born knowing this? And why, aren't we, why isn't it the case? Is there some cruel aspect of reality that, that leaves us damaged and suffering? But by hanging out, relying on short moments of allowing my descriptions to be as they were, relying on a trainer for their, hearing about their experience of what it's been like, um, reading many of the texts and trainings that completely confirm open intelligence and its beneficial nature and that our data can be left as they are, it just built more and more confidence that I could allow more and more things to be as they were. And I continue to do this on a daily basis. 
and then I see how it came about in my experience. I see how it comes about in many other people's experience. And then I know that it is reaching more and more people. You know, the look from one of us into the eyes of a person who hasn't been introduced to an open intelligence is very powerful. You know, we're confirming in other people. When we recognize that in ourselves, it's impossible to not go out there and confirm that in other people, or at least want to confirm that in other people. It's like we want to have the headlines in the news saying, you are made of awesome. Be the power. You don't have to continue on in this ridiculous way of relating. So, you know, I've just given up trying to figure out why the way things are, and I've recognized that it's really up to me in my direct experience. It doesn't matter what another person thinks or feels or is going through in terms of my recognition of open intelligence. It comes back to my commitment to train up in the nature of reality rather than a set of frameworks descriptions. So that's why it's important to always bring it back to our experience rather than trying to think about how their mind works or how their mind works. So the, <clears throat> the view, open intelligence is synonymous with the view or a, more, a comprehensive view that contains within it all points of view, all data, like I was describing, how a rainbow is inseparable from space. All data, thoughts, emotions, sensations, inseparable from open intelligence. It doesn't mean that the way I see the world is exactly how you see the world. But we all have the same fundamental open intelligence. There can only be one open intelligence. So that simplifies things. I mean, it's easy to get wrapped up in thinking, well, okay, eight billion people, how do they have the same intelligence? But that's just because of the conventional way we've been training. Conventional education states that people have an individual mind, but nobody has proven an individual mind. Nobody. It cannot be proved that humans have an individual mind locked in here. When you look at your own in your own experience, be a scientist. Can you find, you know, a, somebody in here? You have a collection of thoughts, emotions, sensations, but there is no proof that your mind is here. I mean, just when you think, you, mean you expand your mind. Think about the country you just came from on the airplane. You can think of your home. You can think of opening your refrigerator door and seeing all the beautiful organic food in the refrigerator. <laughs> and then wishing you had that organic shop right here. That's what I think about every day. <laughs> That's what I talk about a lot. Food. Coffee. <laughs> so you see how expansive the mind is. It, you can't contain it in, within here. So for me, that opened up tremendous possibility. It started to outshine the ideas of limitation that I had about myself, about humanity, society. I started to see how powerful and how potent we actually are as humans and how we have the ability to share this to really start empowering other people with the recognition that we've had it really becomes unstoppable and yeah but where are we going we're not going anywhere <laughs> Even if we're traveling on a jet at 500 kilometers an hour, I don't know how jet fast jets go, but check it out. Are you going anywhere? You're right there. We're right here. And then we project our mind in it to our home country and open the refrigerator door and we're right there. <laughs> we're nowhere and we're everywhere. It's amazing when you look at it that way. Everywhere and nowhere all at once. It seems paradoxical, but when you just put your mind in a restful, relaxed state, rely on short moments of complete relaxation, even if you're tense, we see the mind is everywhere and then nowhere at the same time. And we can sigh, have a sigh of relief. 
within that short moment there is inbuilt security, safety. Even if things look very frightening, each short moment is secure, safe, harmonizing. And then we can talk about what we like to do in our lives. And as trainers, we, we just hang out like any of you. And I don't know, what do we talk about? <laughs> Besides food or which restaurant we're going to go to or how incredible our lifestyle is, knowing that every day we wake up and we're greeted with hundreds of shining examples and seeing people become really empowered, that's a great topic for conversation. What we don't do though is sit around constantly and complain and criticize and talk behind, oh, that person's doing this. And, you know, it's very much solution-oriented, very solution-focused. And that's come about really naturally. You know, seeing that we can all really have a good time regardless of the personal data streams we might experience. So for me, I just really more and more appreciate my colleagues, all the balance view participants, and more and more everyone I see. It's harder and harder to see somebody as a collection of good positive data and negative data or neutral. More and more we just see the, the shine in everyone and their, their possibility, their capability.